Ladies and gentlemen, let's for game to the video. We have some benchmarks of Zen. That's right, the engineering samples of AMD's latest line of processors based on the Summit Ridge platform have started to appear on the internet. Now, before I start discussing the performance levels of this, there are a couple of notes that I want to make. The first is that they are engineering sample benchmarks. So, for example, uh, there are 1D and 2D, as I'm going to be calling them throughout this video. You'll understand why in just a second. And the performance difference between these two processes is actually quite a bit. Yet, if you were to take a look at the number of logical and physical cores, it's the same. And we don't know why that is. It's possible, uh, in terms of the performance discrepancy, we don't know why that is. It's possible that it's just simply reading it wrong, or there could be a clock speed difference, or something entirely different. For example, it could be that some of the cache is simply disabled. And moreover than this, the clocks of these processors is probably not even slightly indicative to the final clocks that we're gonna get for retail sampling. So in short, we should take this as an indication of where the processor is right now, and an indication that these processors are probably going to kick butt. Anyway, with that said, so there is a fairly lengthy name when it comes to the engineering sample. For example, 1D2801A2M88E4 underscore 32 slash 28 underscore N. And the other version is exactly the same, but 2D and the same remaining serial number. Now these are probably revision numbers, but the important thing is the 32 slash 28. This is probably indicative of the clock speeds. So we have 3.2 gigahertz with the turbo and 2.8 gigahertz base, which makes an awful lot of sense. This probably means we're gonna see a clock speed increase towards the later part of the, uh, of the rollout of the processor, and hopefully we can get something more Intel-like, for example, around the four gigahertz range. Now, there are a couple of very important factors with this processor. The CPU is being tested alongside an RX 480. Unfortunately, we don't have it running with other uh, GPU comparisons, for example, let's say a Crossfire configuration or GTX 1070 or GTX 1080. So all we can do is go with what we have. But what is pretty interesting is the RX 480 with different settings across the CPU are hitting 58 frames a second. Now, if we extrapolate and take the average performance of a i7 4790K, that hits around the 60 to 65 frames a second, depending obviously on the processor it's paired with, uh, sorry, the graphics processor it's paired with, and also the graphical settings and other in-game settings as well. Now, what's very cool about this is the, the 4790 runs a considerably higher clock speed. The 4790 is running at four gigahertz. So if you were to take an average of 65 frames a second, and you were to take 65 divided by 58, you're looking at around a 12% difference in in uh, in frame rate between the um, between the engineering sample Zen and the 4790. If, on the other hand, you were to take 3200 uh, and um, make a comparison versus 4 gigahertz, you're looking at a 25% difference in clock speed. Well, that probably means, and this is obviously based upon engineering samples on a very limited um, test size, that in terms of IPC, or at the very least in terms of performance on that processor based upon the clock speed, the engineering sample Zen is probably putting out more performance. However, we are going to make the assumption in this video that that is with all of the logical and physical cores on this engineering sample enabled. It's possible that's not the case, and once again, the Azure Singularity is mis... well, just simply misreading that. But if that is the case, Obviously, Zen does have a considerable um, core advantage. It has double the number of physical cores and double the number of logical cores compared to a 4790. Even so, considering the massive gulf in clock speeds between the two architectures, 25%, this means that 
AMD could well have something pretty special on their hands, particularly if you start to factor in other such optimizations the processor could undergo, and even the platform itself, Summit Ridge, um, towards the end of the Zen rollout. I'm actually really looking forward to what Zen could potentially offer, especially for budget oriented gamers who also do a lot of other tasks. Now how this well this we can extrapolate this to let's say video rendering or 3D image manipulation or scientific endeavors, we don't really know. And how this is going to compare to let's say a Skylake processor or KB Lake or any of the upcoming processors from Intel, we also can only hazard a guess. But I am pretty damn impressed with this, considering once again the massive gulf in performance um, in terms of the clock speed between the two architectures. The other factor for us to take into consideration is I want to know what the difference is between 1D and 2D. It's possible, and I know I'm just going slightly over old ground here, it's possible it's a completely different configuration of the processor. It's possible that, for example, the 1D has additional cache. It's possible that it has more cores enabled. For example, it's possible that you have this situation where some of the logical or physical cores are just not working correctly with the 2D. We just don't know that. Or it could be just I don't know, something entirely different. I mean, for all we know, the cache may be just fucked up. Or it could be they're just testing different samples and figuring, okay, well, this has no level 2 cache enabled, but this doesn't have this enabled, or this doesn't have these instructions enabled. And all they're trying to do is quite literally figure out, well, is the processor stable? So, yeah, it's a whole bunch of stuff, unfortunately. All we can do is go with the performance we know, and this processor is looking to be very damn impressive. I, for one, I'm hoping AMD are going to be very much competitive like they were in the early Athlon days, but I'm unfortunately going to have to get going because it's very late here in the UK. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.